oh my God. Hot ticket question of the day. <laughs> Noelle, why are you wearing a thermal if it's 95 degrees outside? Guys, I don't know. I just wanted to wear stripes for this book haul. I don't know. I'm trying to torture myself, but my remedy is this, a bag of ice sitting on my legs to try to cool me down. It's not a smart decision. I mean, that's, those are the facts. It's not smart, but I thought stripes for a book haul, feel cute, feel a little froggy. But aside from the ice on my leg, which is actually doing wonders, to be honest, <laughs> thanks for asking. Aside from that, today's video is going to be a book haul and I'm so excited. I don't often do these on my channel. In honesty, I've only done one other official book haul on this channel. I usually might do like mini ones in like a vlog, um, but this isn't like a regular occurrence on my channel. So I'm excited for it. However, let's talk about the beast that is a book haul. On the one side of the coin, we have people that just love to sit down and talk about books. But on the other side of the coin, it's a little bit like, damn, this bitch knows how to spend some money. And when I say this bitch, I mean this bitch. This bitch knows how to spend money on books. Um, and I just wanna say a few things, first and foremost. I mean, one, this is not a regular occurrence on my channel, so these books aren't like, look what I picked up in the last week. These are books that I have slowly purchased over the last like three or four months, right? The other thing I'll say is that most of the books in this haul, I think two of them are from Barnes and Noble and one is from eBay. But aside from that, all of the books in this haul are either from local used bookstores that I wanted to support or black owned bookstores across the United States, which I'll link down below if you're interested in supporting a black owned bookstore. And then lastly, if you're watching this book haul and you're like, damn, I wish I could read that too, but I don't have the funds, needn't not worry. Don't know if that worked there, but don't worry. Worry no further. I'm not making any more sense. The more I try to make it make sense, it's just getting worse. What I'm trying to say is this, since I'm not making any sense at all. If you don't have cash for books, you don't have the funds, you don't have the budget, needn't worry. Jesus, Noel, just give it up. Uh, try using the Libby app or the Hoopla app, because those are two apps that I use to download free audiobooks and free eBooks. And before you ask, no, I am not sponsored by either of these companies. I'm not affiliated with either of these companies. Although Libby, if you're looking to affiliate yourself with someone, call me, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I will answer that call. Um, anyway, so if you don't have money for books, both the Libby and Hoopla apps are awesome for downloading free eBooks and audiobooks. However, I can only speak for the United States. I know that both of those apps work in the United States, but I don't know about anywhere else. I would look into them, but if they don't work in your country, I'm so sorry. I just, I don't know where else to get them because those are the two apps that I use. In any case, let's get into it, you guys. Again, I've got quite the haul, so let's do this thing. <laughs> All right, so the first one is Stephen King's Dolores Claiborne. Oh my God, <laughs> look at that beautiful cover. $3.50, folks. $3.50. There is something about a used Stephen King that just really revs my engine. <laughs> Such a Christine thing for me to say. Uh, no, I just love a good used copy of Stephen King. I mean, I've talked about this many times, but this copy of Pet Cemetery, I might frame it one day. Like, you know, you could say, hey kids, like I'm saving this so that you can read it one day for my future children. No, I don't think they get to touch this one. It means too much to me. So um, this one, however, Dolores Claiborne, beautiful. I really don't know what this one is about, which is gonna be a common theme in this book haul. That's the thing about book hauls. I haven't read most of them yet. So um, I just loved the cover of this. And actually in my last video, my 50, 50,000 Q and A thing that I just filmed, someone said, hey, if you liked Misery, you might also like Dolores Claiborne. So. I trust you and I picked it up and I'm really excited and I just love this cover so much. So anyway, that's the first one. Next we have Olivia. And you know what guys, all I know is that this is a book that inspired Andre Osman to write Call Me By Your Name. So I'm gonna assume that there's a little bit of LGBTQ plus representation because that's where he got a lot of his inspiration for Call Me By Your Name. But if Andre Osman said this was his influence, 
then I'm trying to get influenced, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I don't know. I know that Andre Osman wrote the introduction for this copy. It's like a brand new release from Penguins Classics. Oh my God, it'll look so good on this shelf once I'm done with it. Anyway, yeah, excited for this one. Next, we have The Mothers by Britt Bennett. I mean, guys, <laughs> in my June wrap up, I talked about how The Vanishing Half was a five out of five. And I hear this one is just as good, if not better than The Vanishing Half. So I'm stoked for this one. I mean, it's by Britt Bennett. And I, you know, after reading The Vanishing Half, I realized how much I love her writing style. Her descriptions are gorgeous. Her characters are so like, just so deep. You really want to know about them. You really want to get into their minds, into their hearts. It's like you get to know their souls. Um, so anyway, I'm excited for this one. And I just think it's going to be fantastic. I don't actually know what it's about. I'm going to say there's some mothers in it. But aside from that, I'm not sure. All right, guys, next we have So You Want to Talk About Race. And as you can see, I'm currently reading this one. Well, not currently. <laughs> currently, I'm filming this video. Um, but this book, I can't tell you how good it is. It is a five out of five, a 10 out of five. I don't care. It is so good. I'm only halfway through it and I have learned so much from this book. If you're interested in doing any anti-racist reading or work, which I highly recommend, this book has been phenomenal for me. I just think it is chock full of so many lessons. So anyway, really loving this book and can't wait to finish it. Okay, guys, the next book is James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room. Uh, I've been getting, oh, there's actually a few James Baldwin's on this. You know what? I'm just gonna get them all. So the three James Baldwin's I've picked up are Go Tell It on the Mountain. We have Giovanni's Room, which I mentioned, and we have If Beale Street Could Talk. So for a lot of these books, I don't know what the actual premise is or the synopsis or anything. I just know that they came highly recommended to me in my comment sections. And so I'm excited for all three of them. I know that James Baldwin is a fantastic writer or so I've heard. Really excited for these three. Can't wait and will tell you how I feel about them once I've read them. The next book I have on this haul is Queenie. And when I talked about buying this book on my Instagram, I got so many DMs from people saying how much they love this book and how it's like an instant favorite for everyone and they just love it. And the characters are so full of life and wonderful. So I don't actually know what this book is about really. I just know that I'd seen it everywhere. And I was like, well, if everyone's talking about it, it has to be good. So I'm really excited. I would love to read this by the end of July so I can give you my opinion and a better synopsis than what I'm giving you right now in that video, but we'll see what happens. I just know I'm excited. Okay, guys, uh, these two books I already talked about in length in my Reading Rush TBR, and that is The Wedding Date and So You've Been Publicly Shamed. Both of these I've already talked about, so I'm not really gonna go into depth on them, but I do know that The Wedding Date is a nice, cute little romance. And then So You've Been Publicly Shamed is kind of like a social expose on, public shame on the internet and what that can do to people psychologically. Excited for both of them. And I'm hoping to read these for the reading rush. So stay tuned for that vlog. Okay guys, um, these next three books are just a testament on how much this is a Paperback Dreams fan account. That's all it is. I stan Kat. And so I've purchased a few that she highly recommended on her channel. We've got Get a Life Chloe Brown. And I actually already read this. It's about a woman named Chloe and a man named Redford. And Redford is the superintendent of like an apartment complex. And Chloe is one of the tenants. And I won't say much more, but it is a romance. And they both deal with trauma from their past and their present. Um, and we see how that kind of shapes their budding relationship. So very good. The second book is The Boatman's Daughter. I don't think she's actually read this one yet, but she did talk about it in a video. And I said, okay, well, I don't even know if you like it, but I trust you. <laughs> um, and I think it's just like a folklore type of horror. It's like kind of taking like a more mythology type story and making it scary. I'm kind of thinking of like Klaus, that scary Christmas movie. I don't think it's Christmas themed, but I'm thinking like, kind of like, you know, folklore and making it scary. Is this making sense? I don't know, but I haven't read it. So I don't know what it's about. <laughs> And then the third one is Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory. Crematory? Creme de la creme? Crematory, there it is. Yeah, I think this book is just like a, it's just a reflection. A woman who has worked in a crematory and she's talking about lessons she's learned or like stories or 
things she's gathered during her time in that industry. So excited. Next, you guys, oh my God. You know I've been getting more into romance these days. And so the kiss quotient, can we talk about it? Oh my God, Read with Cindy has talked about this in like two of her videos and she's so down with it. And I'm like, I mean, you're just so down with it. How can I not read it? You know what I'm saying? Like you're so excited off of it, I have to. From what I understand, it's about a male escort who is hired by our main protagonist and she is interested in learning how to sex it up, I believe. <laughs> so she hires a male escort to kind of learn how to get down with it in a more mathematical way. I don't know, it's called the quiz quotient, guys. And they're literally standing on that divider symbol. So I don't know. I just know that Read with Cindy loves it and I trust her as well. So very excited for this one. The next one we have is The Hunting Party and don't know much about this one. I believe it takes place on a Scottish estate, which Wow, I'm intrigued. But also it's about like all these friends coming together for New Year's and I'm getting like hardcore ready or not vibes from this. If you've seen that horror movie, I loved it. I thought it was so fun. It's not like super terrifying, but it's like, oh my God, it's thrilling. I loved it so much. So I think I'm kind of giving it, getting this like, we all show up to this house and then this like game takes place that ends up being a little lethal. So we'll see what happens, but I am excited for it. You guys, here's the truth of the matter. Um, I just shoved the ice pack down my shirt. So if you see a plastic bag at any point in the rest of this video, just know I'm doing it in the name of safety because I'm gonna faint soon. <laughs> All right, guys, you know, we're getting close to the end. So if I seem a little stiff, it's because I'm not trying to show you the bag shoved down my shirt. Anyway, let's get into it. We have Love Unscripted and oh my God, am I excited for this one. Again, don't really know what it's about to be quite truthful with you. I think it's about like falling in love through movies or at the movie theater. I don't know. I just know on the back it talks about um, and the neon red hair of Kate Winslet in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is one of my favorite movies. So, okay, dude, I'm being too awkward with this bag in my head. <laughs> I'm just really excited for this one. I love going to the movies. I love Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I think like a good love story that takes place at a movie theater sounds exceptional. So very excited for that one. All right, guys, next one. Now this one was sold out everywhere all the time. And then I went to a used bookstore and I found it and that is Hood Feminism. Oh my God, I cannot tell you how excited I am for this one, especially after reading so much of So You Wanna Talk About Race. I can't wait to read this one because of the lessons I think I'm gonna learn. I mean, here's the thing. I consider myself a proud feminist, truly. Love women. I think women should be treated equal, 100%. However, I do recognize that there are glaring holes in white feminism and how white feminism has really about, has really been about white women getting ahead and leaving women of color behind. So I believe that this book is going to shed some light on those issues and talk about how women of color have been at the center of feminist movements without getting the proper credit for it. I believe, I mean, the subtext is notes from the women that a movement forgot. So I am so excited for this one. And also, oh my God, let's look at the actual paperback. Oh, <gasps> that is just it. That's an exceptional orange. Anyway, I'm really excited for it. And again, I'll let you know what I think once I've read it. Okay guys, this next book, I'm so excited for, but again, don't really know what it's about. Should I? Moving forward, when I do another haul, should I know, like, should I do more research about these books so that I can give better, like, descriptions of them? Or is it more fun for us both to be surprised? Let me know, because I actually don't know which one you guys would prefer. But the book in question is Mexican Gothic. First of all, the cover. Let's discuss. We have this beautiful grain, almost matches, not quite, but beautiful grain with a woman dressed in a, <laughs> dressed in a dress that is for fairy tales only. I mean, like, are you kidding me? And she's holding these like yellow flowers. What I'm telling you is these are like my three favorite colors. I love a good maroon. I love a good green and yellow is my favorite color. So already this cover was like, what is this about? But also Mexican Gothic. Can we discuss? I believe it is a twisted kind of creepy gothic tale. 
And I, again, I don't really know what else it's about. This looks amazing. I've heard it's amazing. I've seen it all over the internet and I'm so excited for it. The next two books are from Toni Morrison. I talked about how I had read Beloved and The Bluest Eye in June, and then both of these books came highly recommended to me in my comments section. So I picked up The Song of Solomon off of eBay, and it's a super used copy, which are my favorite types of books. When a book is well loved and there's like, even in this book, there's underlining, there's annotations. I know some people don't love an annotated book. I know, I, I get it and I understand, but I personally love it. I love seeing how well loved this book was before I got it. And so I'm really excited off of it. But yes, Song of Solomon and Tar Baby, this was from my used bookstore. So it's brand new. There's no annotations in it, unfortunately, but excited for both of these and honestly don't know what either about. I just know that they came highly recommended to me after I talked about Beloved and The Bluest Eye. So I'm excited. Okay guys, three more books left. Let's just, let's get through them. We have Bunny, which I actually read yesterday and what? Like, I'll talk about it more in my wrap up. But what the fuck was that? <laughs> um, you know what? I won't tell you my rating for it, but this was so interesting. Uh, the basic premise is that there's a woman that goes to this prestigious um, master's program in on the East Coast in the United States, and she's in this master's program, and there is a group of girls that call themselves Bunny. And in that group, it's kind of like Mean Girls, like they're just kind of like their own little entity that like everyone loves to hate and, and secretly like wants to be a part of. And then they eventually welcome our main character into the fold and things happen. Things that I'm not even sure I can explain to you because I don't know what was real and what wasn't real. So it was fun though. And I'll talk more about it later. <laughs> Okay, next up we have Their Eyes Were Watching God, which I actually already read. And I'll, again, talk more about in my Ju July wrap up. But this was fantastic. I read it for a book club that I'm in with some fellow grad students and I really, really enjoyed it. We're basically following one woman named Janie um, through various relationships in her life and how she is in both of those or in all of those relationships, so. That's all I'll really say. Halle Berry was the star of the movie version of this book. And I hear it's great. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed the book. So again, I'll talk more about it later, but highly recommend. And then the last one, oh my God, one of President Barack Obama's favorite books of 2019. Oh my God, I didn't even realize it, but it is How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy. Um, if you watched Ariel Bassett's like, I took a break from social media for a week, and here's what I learned in that video, she talks about this book. And so I went and bought it. Here's a problem I've been having lately. Here's some truth for you. Here's some vulnerabilities for you. I, it's the pandemic's been really hard. And one of the things that I've kind of developed in the pandemic is, okay, we're all stuck inside. We're all like, we all can't leave the house or you shouldn't be unless you have a mask on. Please, dear God, put a mask on. And yet every moment that I'm at home, I feel like I have to be doing something productive. And I think this book is gonna help me with that because from my understanding, it's about just allowing yourself to do nothing allowing yourself to just be in your own head and enjoy life and not feel like you constantly have to be producing, you constantly have to be working, you have to be doing something productive in life. And to be honest, I need that right now. So really excited for this one. Very encouraged that Barack Obama said it's one of his favorites. And also the cover, like, can we discuss? Gorgeous. Okay guys, we've come to the end of this haul and also the end of my ice. Oh my God, this is a testament to my love for all of you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, download the Libby and Hoopla apps if you live in the United States and maybe they work other places, but again, free audiobooks and eBooks there. I love using both those apps. I use Libby every single day of my life. So I highly recommend. I will also leave some of my favorite black owned bookstores down below. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun and I hope to see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.